Hey, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at TrueClassicTees.com. TrueClassicTees.com, using the promo code OTSGOLF, you can get 25% off plus free shipping. Shop the outerwear collection for fall golf, pullovers and zip-ups. Great for wherever you're playing right now. TrueClassicTees.com, 25% off plus free shipping using the promo code OTSGOLF. Enjoy the episode. Three shots, four part, I just do two, one putt, part four, birdie, woohoo, new driver, info, replace, M2, part five, fairway, what you fin do, think I'll try to get on, and two, start right, good line, good view, it drew, shoot him, make Gavin, two thumbs that's up, episode 104, we got Ty Saloni, we got that right, Ty? Yeah, that's good. Right on. Um, so yeah, we got Bracer here, uh, Ty Saloni, uh, Canadian pro, played a little bit recently on East Coast Pro Tour, EMU grad, so you would be... Well, we were just kind of talking about it. third or fourth EMU guy. Um, apparently, it's a, I don't know, they must have a scout in the area or something up here in Ontario, yeah, picking me. up a lot of you guys. That's Bryce, eh? Bringing them down to Michigan. But uh, yeah, Ty, how are you doing, man? Uh, anybody who doesn't know you, can I tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I uh, just finished up school in May uh, at Eastern, took the COVID year, so I did five years there. And uh, just first summer as a pro was playing um, East Coast Tour, some Toronto Players Tour events, and I just got just got bounced from second stage of Corn Ferry. So my uh, my year is kind of on pause right now. I'm gonna gonna take November off, first time off in, in a good five years. So I'll enjoy that and then get back at it in the spring. Maybe do some some Canadian tour. Um, I gotta think about that, but got some time. So. Yeah, last week we had Zach on. He was kind of saying the same thing. He's just like he's down in Florida now. Uh, Zach Vimnitz, mm-hmm. he's a good buddy with Bryce, and he was saying he's just kind of firing every tournament that he can get into right now, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, then kind of sort out what you're gonna do for uh, for the following season. So, um, I guess we can kind of take it back to to school even a little bit. So, um, Eastern Michigan guy. So we've had Jake McDalty on. Um, Michael Blair on, and I think we mentioned one other one, but uh, how was that? Like, how was it going to school down there? I guess that's not too far from where Bryce is right now. Mm, no, yeah. Cool. yeah. It's only, I mean, it's only you know, like nine hours on a good day for me, so it wasn't too bad getting there, but I mean, I went in with uh, Cougar Collins, Zach Mason. I knew them forever, and Nick Ross was there. for. I had him for a year. He's a, he's a good Hamilton boy. Uh, it was just we, we had we had a time there. It was, it was a whole team of Canucks. We had four Canadians in the starting lineup by the uh, by the end of the fifth year. So all knew each other well. We lived together for five years, and we're all competitive. We just we just struggled to play well all together. We got we got a couple wins, and like we we co won a conference champ in 2019, but we never. I don't think we kind of went up to our potential. We had too good of a team to be getting the results that we were getting, but we did have a hell of a time doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's fun. Uh, I've seen Cougar play a little bit and uh, watch him on the range a bit, and I was playing like some little fun cash game that he was in one time. Um, I didn't really know him at the time, or uh, I'd met him afterwards when I was playing with uh, – I was caddying for Jake at the Osprey Valley Open. I think it was in 2020, and he was on the range, so – that's how those guys connected. Um, obviously, both being EMU grads, I think Jake's a couple years older than you, but uh, you guys, but um, you guys were all around the same age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all the guys that I went in with. We went in with uh, there were six freshmen that year, and we lived together all five, so we got to know each other pretty well. And I knew Coog when I was like, we were playing junior tournaments together when we were like thirteen or something. So. There was yeah. one season we, we we played every junior to every junior tournament together. Like the Ontario won the juvenile spring classic. We, every single one we got paired up together. It was crazy. I had to make it a lot easier. Right? Kind of going in with uh, guys you're kind of comfortable around. Yeah, exactly. Like it's. Um, yeah, sorry, this is episode 103, by the way. I was wrong. I just looked it up. It's 103, not 104. <laughs> That's all just right. To, just to put that in there. We'll restart all together. No, we uh, <laughs> we don't we don't edit enough around here, but uh, we'll stick with we'll stick with 104. But uh, well, you guys are MAC, right? Is that Mid Atlantic? No, Mid American. Mid American. Okay, so I don't know. Bryce and I've been rifling off quite a few like NCAA pods lately. We had. 
Um, Vimon last week was at Moorhead. Uh, Andy Walker. Parker Haynes. So Andy Walker is the head coach at BCU. So he was – we've been kind of getting a bit more of an idea of college golf. And um, so you guys had like six guys typically in your rotation. Is that about it on your team? Um, well, bringing it – I mean, going to, to a tournament, it was mainly just five. We didn't get a lot of individuals because we, we did have a really good schedule. Like we're playing a lot of Big Ten tournaments and stuff. and. Mm-hmm. Like they're not going to give Eastern Michigan a individual spot when you got teams like Ohio State there and stuff. They're right. going to give them thirty, but we kind of we had we had a pretty concrete lineup, I'd say, for most of the years. Like three of us, four of us, and there'd be one guy kind of rotating in and out. Yeah, but, um, it, it was it was competitive. Like I mean, I mean, I missed the first tournament at school in qualifying. I went shot it wasn't very good it was it was on our home course probably around even par or something which is me going in when i was 17 i was like that's pretty i'll take that it's pretty good not even close like seven man eight man and then missed the first one missed a couple in in the first year and it's just our qualifying got so competitive like we're all best buddies but when you go out there it's like you're playing against a guy you live with sometimes for the four and the five spot Mm-hmm. And like, then you got to drive home with them. It's a little weird. Sometimes <laughs> get into the house. There were like, there was only five suitcases one time, and we had five. We had six guys in the house, and so the one guy who wasn't traveling just had to take his stuff out and walk the suitcase to the other guy's room. Oh. It, 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 yeah, I got a little walk weird. of shame. Yeah, but it was. That's good though. We talk about this with a lot of our college guys. Like, you get that friendly, competitive nature in practice and and around around the squad and it just makes everyone better like in my opinion i mean you have to battle and you have to like be there every day ready to work so um in my opinion i mean i lived through it through hockey like there's so much friendly competition and you just you just have to be good every day and i feel like it makes you so much better yeah exactly like outside of even outside of tournaments now i mean tomorrow i'm going up to uh, playing in camelot in ottawa we got a playing a huge money game there just to kind of keep the juices flowing even though there's mm-hmm. no real tournaments going on yeah like i was just it's... telling uh i was just telling bryce or before like i was uh well shout out to jr uh hurley we we met up guy through the pod we uh met up in toronto he's from out west went and watched the leaf game the other day i was talking to you during a tire when we were sitting there and uh yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was way too deep. I had at least, I don't know, <laughs> seven or eight different lines on one game. So it was uh, it was good. And it was like a 3-2 game against Ottawa, which was pretty uh, odd. But the money line, um, it was okay. Like, obviously, it wasn't pretty good, any good for Toronto. But, uh, yeah, it uh, it worked out. We we came up even. But, uh, yeah, JR was in town. We went and checked out a game. And then I ended up, uh, like, befriending a guy, Nick. So if he's listening to the pod, he was sitting beside us. And, uh picked up some merch so thank you nick that was pretty cool nice. and uh yeah it was cool man it was just, we were just kind of talking golf the whole time guys uh wife was with him i think steph so sorry steph we, we were just sitting there talking golf. she probably hated you <laughs> well we're, they're like at a game like they're in town for their honeymoon or their 10-year anniversary i think it was and we we're just talking golf the whole time but it was it was a lot of fun <laughs> but uh you know i was on about an hour's sleep had a little money game in the morning and uh yeah i think i had to roll in like a six footer to I told Bryce to break even on the on eighteen. So it was it was tough. I was a little not very rested. So maybe get some uh, some sleep before it if you can. I don't know. That might work out a bit better for you. That'll amp you up for a good hour though. Yeah. That. I had a uh, speaking of which I had another buddy when I posted today, uh Anthony Spagnoli. Do you know Anthony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So sure. he said uh you know he said yeah Ty's a good guy and uh he was mentioning when you guys played, uh, I think you and Cougar played Team Ontario a little while. Yep. Uh, no, Coug, Coug didn't do Team Ontario. He he was on the national team. Okay. He was on Team Um, I mean, I was with like Jake Bryson, Sam Meek. Oh, God. It, it was pretty much the same same squad. Uh, Jackson Bowery. Just got all, all Ontario boys. Yeah. And, well, obviously Team Ontario. My bad. But, so uh, what's what's that format like is it pretty similar to school or or when you guys are playing for uh like provincial tournaments what are those like for you it was mainly just uh training camps so we'd have one like january february march i think april yeah i, I could get a couple things wrong because this was like seven years ago now it was a while ago 
but uh, it would all you'd just be gearing up for the the Can Am matches where we'd play against Team South Carolina at uh, Wachusett Plantation in uh, I think it's like South Myrtle Beach. But the, the track is sick, and the, when we played against them, their team had uh, Jake Bridgman and Trent Phillips, so they were pretty stacked. And you know uh, Peyton Collins, Peyton Collins. Yeah, yeah, I recognize yeah. that name. I think he's on so, PGA Tour Canada right now. He's, I think he's got one more year in Nevada. He's he's playing he's playing in school still. I recognize that name. He probably he probably played some of them though. I think he actually did. Yeah, he's he's a stick. He's a good player. But we were we were partners for that, and we are I don't know probably fifteen or sixteen years old. And in the better ball, we went. 12 deep i think oh that's a good day but yeah we lost one down to trent phillips and jake bridgman and you see those guys now compared to us it's like i'm the worst one out of those four based on rankings like for sure mm -hmm. in, in college i think i peaked at like maybe 220 or 230 i think peyton's gotten inside the top 100 or might be right now trent phillips was like ranked two or three and I think Dick Bridgman was top five for a while now, too. I'm pretty sure he's playing on Corn Ferry right now. And Trent just made it to final stage. Like, I don't know. Where, like, you're playing against those guys when you're 15, 16. You're like, damn, these guys are just really good. And then you keep seeing their name forever. And you're like, yeah, these guys are a lot better than we thought. <laughs> yeah. Like, they just absolutely just waxed us. Uh, do you play any other sports at all? Or is, kind of, is golf kind of it? Or did you, I guess I should say? Yeah, I just golf now. I played um, I played a lot of like pretty high level soccer actually. Okay. Um, and played some football. Can't really skate. I'll put that out there right now. But <laughs> never played hockey. I wish. I watch it a lot. <laughs> Can't that's, skate though. That's uh that's Bryce's bread and butter. Still uh still yeah. living the dream, playing D division now, scoring seventy no, goals a uh, game. <laughs> I'm in a different league, all right. I'm not terrorizing the D league anymore. <laughs> Yeah, Bryce is uh I don't know we've we connected a couple weeks ago with the development to goalie coach St. Louis Blues his name's Stewie uh Dan so Stewart and he was Bryce was his shooter when uh when Bryce was playing in Sault Ste. Marie so yeah. it's uh it was kind of cool to sort of connect and we talk a little bit of hockey a couple other sports and whatnot so I guess we're missing the Monday nighters probably starting right now as we record this on Monday night um I know For I got what? I think Monday nighters on right now. I got the Leaf game on right now. Oh, do you? So yeah, we're uh, TV over here. This will be court. out on Friday. People will be like, "What are you talking about?" But it's Denver LA yeah. tonight. So um, yeah, nobody, nobody wants to watch that. No, it's, it's, it's tough, man. LA. Oh, you're talking about football? Yeah, right? yeah. I'm a hockey guy. I don't care about football. We'll watch the. Uh, we'll watch. The, oh, the coyote. The Coyotes are up. And uh, yeah. sorry, I might have a couple buddies who are like diehard Leafs fans. I've mentioned this before. Listening to the. Uh, Listen to the pod, and I took, I think I took Coyotes plus 540 today for just a straight money <laughs> oh. line. I looked at Holy. it, I was like, how do you not throw a bet on that? Like, how do you not throw a little something on that? So, because what's his name? Shalgren's probably in, or somebody's probably in. Yeah, he so, is. Yeah, so. I'm, I, I'm an embarrassment yeah. to the Americans, man. The fact that I watch hockey over football makes people cringe down here. Oh, that's, uh, I, I got to try and find it. I got to try and find it, Bryce. You take over for a second. I need to find out how bad that money line was against Arizona. But, I don't know uh, how it could have been that bad. I don't think Arizona's that bad, but. Well, there's, is I don't think there's much sports, like in professional sports, I don't think there's many sports that has more parity than, uh, than the NHL. But right now, Arizona's, they're in tough shape right now. Um, okay. Wanted to ask you, though, so, Ty, you have been involved in like one of the best matches in mass match play history, right? Like it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's uh, that you might, you might not want to think it, but like when we were, when I was like kind of reading through it and it was with Mark Casulo, who I've talked to quite a bit, Anthony uh, Spagnoli, again, friend of the pod, a good friend of mine also knows Mark plays with Mark a little bit. So can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that match? Cause that was, I guess your second pro win. That was the first one. Oh, was it? Play. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was nuts. I mean, I was waiting. Like, I was texting uh, Massimo Roche, like the guy, the one guy who runs the tour. And um, I was texting him and Luca, like, when are you guys going to release this video? Because I don't really remember anything. Like, I, I was just, a, I've never been in a zone that hard. It was like the shots were good, but it's just, the, I've never putted that well. Like, I was just, like, 30 footers were just dropping. And one of them even rolled backwards. Like, you, you can't 
I, he can't do anything about that. Like, <laughs> my dad and I look at each other and we're like, you're kidding me. Like, it rolled an inch past the hole and came back. Just it, a magnet in the bottom was, of the cup. Yeah, we were burying on top of each other. I mean, we, we both parred, I think we parred one and two. And then a couple 25 footers on three. Um, I think I halved that with a 10 footer on five. And then it's a 30 footer, then made an eagle on his birdie. 10 footer to have, 50 footer to have. Like it was just, it was crazy. So you were, I think you shot, what did you shoot, 61 or something? We, well, we ended on 15, but uh, I was, I think I was nine through 12. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Blast, I blasted one out of bounds on 13, par five, but made a bogey on it. Lost the hole, but made a bogey on it. But then went par, par, and we were just, we were done. So, um, Damn. I mean, there was a part, eight, 18 was a five, then 16 was pretty short, but nah, I don't know. I mean, I've never had a putter that hot since. The putter's been really good. I switched to, if Zach Mason listens to this, and his, his, putter, his spider has saved my season. <laughs> I switched from the ping to that thing. Yeah, we were um, talking about that a little bit last night. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, religiously yeah. stuck with a putter. Um, Bryce will, like, he... Yeah, not Bry- talk about it. Yeah, Bryce. Yeah. Won't. Bry- okay. Bryce. Bryce goes back and forth with different putters and, and struggles with the. I got bit. six of them, and they all putt just as bad as the other one. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe the Scotty I have on the way might help, but probably not. Yeah, you're gonna get it in like 2025. So you're nine down through 12, <laughs> right? Like, so yeah. were you starting to think that that like obviously you're not gonna play it out, like, but have you have you shot that low before? I've had, um, I think, I think 63, like eight under has been Oof. my low. I've never finished that. I've had 63 probably like maybe five, six, seven times, but right. never lower than that. But like some of them are like they're on my home course, club mm-hmm. champs from a tee up and stuff. But that's probably one of the first, that's definitely the lowest one in like competition. If it was a stroke play and I was able to finish it. I had a couple of good like seven, six unders this summer when it mattered, like on the second day of a tournament or in first stage, I shot six under in the last round to make it on a number. Like those rounds to me feel better than going to my home course and shooting eight or something. Yeah. You like know, just even, even shooting like four under when it matters versus bogey yeah, three. Sure. Eight. Yeah. Like I would, uh, like even at my home course a little while ago, not, like before I was playing at Port Hope, I'd, I'd go out and like, you know, sometimes I just go up for a quick nine. I'd be like one or two under, which is, you know, that's a great score for me right now. But like, you can hit the ball wherever you want, you know, where it's going to land, you know, where you got to hit it. Like eventually it's just like, I don't know, it takes a lot out of the game, right? Like, so it's not quite as fun. And, and so when you go out to like a new course, like you were saying, I know I had it written down, um, forest, I can't remember. Ken, it was a Kindaloo oh, Forest it, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so playing seventy eight hundred yards, but uh, you know, when we were talking to Zach last week or a couple of weeks ago, he was saying the same type of thing. Is like, um, like par is no good anymore, right? Especially in those events. And I know what you're saying. That's high when we were talking. Like those guys are, you know, somebody's gonna go seven, eight, nine deep, and and you're gonna have to yeah. like try to compete with that or try knock that off, right? So. All right, we made it through nine, and this glizzy is brought to you by our friends over at Manscaped, manscaped manscaped.com. You can go over, check out the Ultra Premium Collection, or anything that you need to not suffer through the back nine here. Using the promo code OTSGOLF, you will get 20% off plus free shipping, and maybe you'll go low on the back. Thank you for supporting the episode. Thank you for supporting the pod. Manscaped.com, 20% off using the promo code OTSGOLF. Free shipping right to your door. Enjoy the pod. It's a good time to introduce a question here. We've got a uh, friend of the pod, our club champion, actually, at Port Hope. So uh, I know he'll like me saying that, Dan Clancy. So um, really good dude. Uh, do you put uh, – this is just an Instagram question. So thanks for uh, anybody who entered one. We just want to grab one. Or if anybody left a question, we just want to grab a quick one. Do you put any work into your game during before or, or, or during before after a round? So I, when I retyped this, left left out mental game. Do you put anything into like your mental game during or before a round um, that you know you might be able to pass off some tips to to the guys like Bryce and I who could use them? You mean like during 
like right before a competition round yeah i think so like when you're yeah when you're kind of prepping and you're like thinking like mentally like how do you prep for that round or if something's kind of not going well during a round and you got to kind of pivot make an adjustment um maybe a bit of a two-part question um so i do like i like to play at least two practice rounds for like big four-day events like just nine on the first day nine on the second day and that's where i get all my like strategical and like course work done mm-hmm. like it's just mapping out a game plan and when i'm prepping for a round like i don't care i've had some of the worst range systems of my life before like huge tournaments and big rounds and like i'm just there to get loose right. and no matter how the day is going like whatsoever i just stick to what i wrote in my track book just stick to what i wrote i know that's the right way to go about things i mean obviously if i'm if i step up there and i'm hitting 50 yard cuts like i gotta you gotta play it mm-hmm. you gotta don't try and fight it even even if you hit a 10 yard draw you get out there and you're hitting 20 yard phase like you gotta play with what's going on that day but uh, i mean game plan wise i like yeah even even if i'm hitting it sideways it's like my my mind i'm fully committed to just doing what i wrote down i know that's the right thing to do and strength is on the green so if i can just get the ball on the green i know the day is going to be decent so that's kind of one of the things that i've thought of too and like you know bryce and i being you know we're both decent golfers but everything looks a little bit different on each day right so like i don't go out (laughs) typically and like a little bit (laughs) saturday can look a lot different than sunday right so that's one of those things where i've really tried to like if i am recently like i've been a draw hitter my whole life bryce or was i in a fade when we played i think yeah you were yeah so like i introduced this fade which feels great i'd love to be able to have a little fade or a little cut right so um but i don't typically play that i'm like a five ten year draw for the most part so trying to like get in um you know trust that and then i'm a lefty too so i get a little bit weird on the course like most of us do like we do weird yeah. shit like Same. and yeah are, are you a lefty yeah right on yeah. man right on i did not know that yeah <laughs> so the touch around the greens this is clearly like a pattern we've been talking about this with like it, it seems like it's more or less like a, a righty or, or lefty versus righty thing so bryce just smashes it carries it 330 off the tee and then <laughs> we uh yeah we clean up around the greens but um i think that's something that i've tried to like introduce to my game even just off the tee for the most part just kind of play what's there not try to like change that when that's going through the round i think it helps i think i think it definitely helps a little bit um but the difference between you and i or bryce and i and you ty is like you're able to kind of like grind it out through the round and like you know, do what you know is right. We're we're just gonna try and introduce new things that we've never tried before. Yeah, I'm just golf, guess and right? check every hole, really. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'm like, I can hit that shot. There's a, there's a window there, and it's like definitely not there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's kind of a cool question. We always like to ask the mental aspect of it because, like, you being a former NCAA player, we've talked to twenty or thirty NCAA athletes now, and it's always uh, we've had people like there's so much variance. So we've had guys. Or girls talk about how it feels like it's a one man sport and like you're just kind of like, uh, you know, kind of solo. You're out there for your team, you know, but you're playing for yourself. And then we've had other people and like, you know, Parker were saying and you said like the guys are so tight, right? You're still battling the guys, but you're trying to like build them up as you can. And Andy Walker, same thing. It was kind of good getting like his his viewpoint of being a coach of uh, like they're I think they're around like a top 50 team now in the country. And um you know, trying to preach the players that it's team first, right? That's got to be something that's very difficult. And I think that that would, you know, play into the the mental game a little bit different when you're at school versus, you know, now you're trying to make a living playing the game, right? So yeah. um, schedule-wise, so we're going to take a break in a couple minutes here, um, introduce a new sponsor, BetStamp. Um, but your schedule, you got anything uh, that you're looking into after November for the new year? Um, well, my parents, my parents have a condo in Myrtle Beach, so mm. now that I don't have like corn fairies completely done, I will probably be going down there January. I gotta think about December still. Like, I don't know what right. I want to do for, December, but January, February for sure, and March. But a lot of my buddies like Coog and Zach Mason. I mean, they got places down in Florida, so they're going to be grinding some mini tours out there. I can go spunk at their place for a couple weeks, play some tournaments with them. 
it'll be just playing it by ear. But for most of November, I mean, I'm going to be taking it easy. I haven't, I haven't taken an extended break away from practicing or the sticks in general in a long time. So just enjoy some other hobbies for a couple of weeks and then get back into it. I like it. Uh, good little timer. We're just going to take a quick break. Uh, introduce a sponsor from Bet Stamp. Um, somebody that Bryce and I started working with. A um, little bit of a uh, little bit of sports betting, which uh, everybody's really into right now. So especially uh, getting some of those golf lines. Um, yeah. And then we'll be back. We want to talk a little bit about uh, you know kind of what it was like when you turned pro. Um, what's in the bag? We got I Bryce. There's a big big bad guy and uh big, yeah he uh he loves talking gear so i told him that you got a little bit of a unicorn in there i didn't tell him what yet so yeah but yeah. uh you know and then we'll uh we'll kind of wrap things grab some socials and stuff like that but uh we'll be right back all right week one bogey bets with our friends over at bet stamp uh the ultimate place to just do uh some cool line shopping if you want to you know make some weekend golf picks um Anybody who doesn't know, line shopping is taking multiple different sports books uh, and just comparing them to the other one, uh, the others, and giving you the best return on your investment. So, uh, Bryce and I have kind of combed through using the BetStamp app. It makes it very easy for you to just compare uh, one book to the next, and uh, yeah, pick the lowest possible price to get the best return on your investment. This week, I'm gonna start it off, Bryce. I'm gonna go with the three peat JT. Um, Looking through, I found it at Bet MGM for plus seventeen hundred. That's pretty good odds for JT to go to three beat in the CJ Cup. Bet three six five and Score Golf had at both plus fourteen hundred. So we're making three hundred points on that. Why not? Good pick. Uh, you taking anybody outright? Uh, I did. I took uh, Rory. Uh, Bet MGM had him at plus seven hundred, and then Win Bet had him at plus six hundred. So pretty big jump there. Caesars was at six fifty, so kind of right in the middle. But obviously. Um, taking the best line there at plus 700. Um, the way bet stamp kind of works too is you'll um, you'll type in your bet, whatever you want to bet that night and or that weekend, and it'll give you right there the best sports book that you're signed up for with the best odds, so that you don't have to go searching through every single sports book. Um, it'll be right there for you. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting one too. I want to go Ricky Fowler top five. So we remember like the resurgence of Ricky Fowler last year it was at the CJ Cup. Um, I found him at DK for plus twelve hundred, which was great for a top five. Um, bet three six five also at twelve hundred, and bet MGM was down at eight fifty. So they think that Ricky is going to be playing well. So pretty big discrepancy there. So yeah, kind of what we're talking about with being able to use bet stamp, it'll kind of compare them all. I wanted to take Ricky Fowler. I don't typically pick Ricky Fowler, but I thought for a top five uh, coming off, um, you know, a number he had a T two last weekend, and he was a. Uh, I think he was second out right here last year too, so I wanted to pick that one. Yeah, I uh, I got a top five with Max Homa. Uh, been really hot lately, playing well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's gonna have a big year. I think I'm gonna be. Uh, he might be my new Victor Hovland this year. So, um, as I, as you guys all know, we used to do the pickums. Um, this is kind of the same thing, just uh, with our partners at Bet Stamps. So we're kind of reworking things this year. So. Um, Bet MGM had him at plus 400, and so did WinBet. And Caesars didn't have a top five option for some reason. But I took the plus 400 because uh, it's pretty good odds, and Max is uh, going to have a good year this year. So, Yeah, I took a uh, number nine player in the world, kind of falling back to Colin Marikawa. But uh, last year was uh, top five here as well. Uh, actually, no, he was second last year at the CJ Cup. So um, played well. Uh, always does, you know, kind of always in the mix, but he's kind of fallen off the radar, not off the radar, but he's kind of fallen back a little bit. Um, found him at uh, Bet MGM for plus 650 for a top five for Col- like Colin Morikawa. I think that that's pretty clean. Uh, DraftKings had him down at plus 550, so there's not too much discrepancy here, but uh, again, just, you know, we can kind of see the difference between the different books. And, you know, I went ahead and took Bet MGM at plus 650, the ultimate value I could get. Yeah, I went for a top 10 as my third pick. Um, Cameron Young, top 10. Bet MGM had him at plus 200. Win Bet had him at plus 250. So uh, making a couple extra bucks there using Bet Stamp and getting the better line on Win Bet. Man, so. there are some players in this field too. So hopefully it's getting people excited. It kind of feels like, uh, I don't know, you know, the golf season is kind of like kicking off again. I know we'll get yeah. a little break over the holidays. But um, yeah, thanks everybody listening to the pod. We're going to get back into it with Ty Saloni here. Really good episode. Um, so we can kind of wrap it up with him. If you're interested and, uh, you know, joining us at BetStamp, getting the best possible line, 
uh, shopping a few different books. If you already got them, we can get you set up through. Just let us know, and we'll uh, send you over a referral link, and we'll get you set up for it. It's, uh, you know, and they'll kick you back a little a little something for getting set up. Um, but, yeah, let's jump back into it with our episode with Ty Zaloni. <laughs> All right, we're back. Um, Ty, you were saying uh, that you had a little something to add to uh, the question we got from Dan. Just a little, better, a little yeah. bit about the mental game. Yeah. Um, big thing, too. It's like playing with what you got. But like you hear everybody say that you got to spend time on the short game and stuff, but you never really hear why. And I was the same way. Like, I'd be a short game and stuff. But I mean, like, how what's a good short game if I'm missing 10 greens? But it is the the mental side of it to where I'm at the point now where it's like I'm going to be around a certain score and my good rounds are when the putts are dropping poor rounds are like my last round of Q school where just it's golf and just nothing goes right like nothing I was putting good swings on it didn't end up good bad swings that were just awful but most days like you step up there no matter how bad my range session is I'm on the putting green. I can't get the speeds right or something. Um, when you get on the course, if you, you have a good short game, it takes so much stress just off your tee shots, especially your iron play. I find like you're not as tense going out of tuck pin. Like you're, you're taking a conservative target and making an aggressive swing and stuff, but you're not sitting there with a pitching wedge in hand worrying about short siding yourself if you're if you got a good short game in your back pocket, it just takes so much more stress off the rest of your game because it's like, all right, if I blast this tee shot in the trees, I can chip out to 50 yards and I got a good chance of getting up and down. You're not sitting there with a wedge in hand, writing out five on the card. Right. Do Bryce. you use any uh, any decade or any any, uh, any strategies like those or you kind of all feel? Mostly all, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say just all feel. Like I know what, what decades about and stuff but like our, our coach at school coach Cunningham like he was we all didn't like it first year because like we're coming out of junior golf and you want to hit wedges at pins and mm -hmm. nine iron in hand you should be hitting a nine iron at the stick but just learning to play off the stick in school because those sticks are cut on some ugly spots and when you're playing Pete Dye courses, if you're short-sided, like you can just write a bogey down on the card right away unless you make a 30-footer. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of just, yeah, that, it's hitting an aggressive shot still, an aggressive swing at a, at a smart target. That's about it. If the pin's cut three off the left, like you should be, I mean, no matter what club you have in your hand, like you got to pitch it on your hand. It's like you should be aiming four to the right. And decade will give you around the same number, but it's it's kind of just it's just putting numbers behind common sense, kind of if you know what yeah. I mean. Bryce, this sounds that's, like me at. Our... Sorry, is sorry, Ty. This sounds like fifteen at uh, Port Hope. I like ripped one down the right hand side. Um, <clears throat> thanks to Bryce and. Uh... Oh man, his name's escaping me right now. Damn it. Who Coiner? Coiner, thank you. But uh, we're playing banker. Um, I'm sure you play a little bit of banker yourself, Ty. And these guys won't help me look for my ball, and I'm in the car by myself. So, <laughs> so the golf gods looked out for me, and uh, I took a drop from I don't know 130 out, and what I hit it to, I didn't even get up to the green, and they had already given it to me. So thanks, guys. He so. landed it, probably he landed front edge. The pin was probably five paces off the front, twelve off the right. He landed it front right. And it had a massive slope and rolled to literally three inches. Yeah. And I just, we'll all, I just driver <laughs> swung my putter and hit his ball all the way back to him. Yeah. So I think, I think that one was worth like we had, Bryce had won the first seven holes and we were on an eight hole layover at that point. So, yeah. Uh, that was cool. That was, that was sweet. One. So I didn't even have to go up to, I didn't even need to go up to the green. So, but um, that's kind of like, when you're talking about that time thinking like about my game really off the tee like some days it can be nails it can be it can look good it can feel good i still hit the ball a long way like when i play with bryce i don't but like in most of my groups i hit the ball a long way but you know like when things are going bad i get a little bit of a pull like i'm pulling it to the right hand side but you know typically i roll it pretty well wedges are pretty good um yep. and i do think that there is a lot to that like i used to focus a lot when i was a junior on my short game and it definitely saved me quite a bit um and I think, you know, if people are wanting to get better, especially, you know, maybe at our level, like if you're kind of entering like a single digit handicap or mid-single mid or something, I think focusing on your short game is where 
Like if I start draining a few putts, that's where I'm going to see like, you know, a 73, 74 versus like an 80 or something. Right. So mm, like some, yeah. some things have to happen in that round You're to, yeah, to, to make it go low. Right. Or to make ourselves go low, like at our level, you find if like, put, if I putt that day, like I did on one, two, three, four, I would have shot 62. Yeah. It would have, uh, he would have beat Port Hope up pretty good. Then I just went, then I just went down. Huh? It's not a long it course. Just, I don't know if you've ever played it, Ty. Like, I know you're... Oh, well, no, I've heard a lot about it, though. Yeah, like, it's, like, right on the water. It's, it's pretty tough. cool. It, it's, it's pretty tough. Cool. Yeah. Probably gets pretty windy there, too, huh? Oh, it, yeah. It does, yeah. If you're ever coming through, let me know. Like, it's just, uh, well, you, you kind of know where it is. It's a couple, I guess it'd be a yeah. couple hours or about an hour and a half west of where you yeah. are, maybe. Yeah, if you're ever coming through, let me know and we'll uh we'll tee it up. But it's uh it's a pretty cool course. I like it. It's a lot of fun to play. It's like every round is different, which is uh which is pretty awesome. Uh wanted to ask you, because this is something that we Bryce and I just kind of funny enough, I don't know, we've probably had like half of the episodes have been pro golfers and we just finally clued in or thought about asking how the process of turning pro was, and then we realized it's just kind of like you register into a tournament. And you don't become a pro until you start making money, right? So, um, you got you got a couple of wins now. Um, that match play one being your first. So, when you're kind of leaving school, what's the thought? Like, were you did you know you're gonna go pro right away? Like, you know, okay, I'm gonna turn pro. I'm gonna try and like make a career. Of this was that your thoughts, or were you thinking like, uh, you know, maybe just kind of like coast into it or try something a little different? No, I like I wanted to give it the best run possible for a long time like that was that was always going to be the like the goal right out of school um i was debating a little bit like kind of staying am because i've never i've never played in the usam that's that's the only reason i would kind of stay am for one more year to give it a run mm -hmm. but then i'm just thinking about it for the last semester and it's like do i really want to wait like the qualifiers are mid-summer or something i think i think the tournament's closer to the end of the summer like i'd be sitting there waiting four months and just playing a couple tournaments here and there just to try and qualify for one so i said no turn pro play the love playing the mini tours like they're it's it's fun like you, mm -hmm. I, enjoy, I like i enjoy playing them obviously want to get further than that never most guys do but they are a lot of fun and you actually make some, make some pretty good coin because the expenses aren't very high. That's the thing. Like the money's so much higher, the purses are so much higher on the Canadian tour. Except your expenses for the year, are like twenty five. Yeah, you're 30, going 30, 30. all over the province. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I remember talking to a few of the guys. Like we had Callum on, uh, Callum Davison, Lucas Noni, like yep. a few of those guys, yep. Ziggy, uh, Michael Blair. Like in one of the like we always end up talking about travel and that's it right like so lucas and callum had a pretty cool uh travel schedule like ziggy was pretty standard like he'd drive a couple with his uh partner trevor you um i've carried for ziggy a couple times and met trevor which was pretty cool so they they travel quite a bit together you know they do like the car planes whatever it is but both lucas and callum uh they drove it which was pretty cool so uh um, yep. i've I've, so I've met rosie which is lucas's uh Lucas is van, so him and his uh him and his wife yeah. or his uh girlfriend fiance, whatever it may be, they like kinda converted a um I think they got a Dodge, like a sprinter platform, um, and they converted it into their home, right? And they uh they travel it was kind of on the basis of going to the PGA Tour Canada and they took it down to Florida for uh for some events and I don't know if they did Q school or just a minor league tour. And then they came up and he said it was like fifty thousand kilometers or fifty five thousand kilometers or something over the course of the year. So um, definitely would have kept costs down, I think, if that's your home. But like gas and stuff is not cheap either, right? But no, it's not. But even flights out west, like Toronto to BC, like you're scaring a grand sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, depending where you're going, like it's just insane. Yeah, but it's funny because we had Vim on the other day. He's like, "Yeah, I'm just in the central area of Florida, and I booked every single tournament because they're all here, and I just drive to the course and go play." Yeah, because they're all they're all the mini tour events, right? So. Well, yeah, that's kind of like what Callum said too. Like he plays down at the Palms, and he's down there, and like they're all sort of in that area. It's like the mecca of, you know, minor league golf, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, the minor league golf tour or whatever it is, uh, yeah. is down there, and that's kind of what everybody's trying, you know, playing while they're not quali or playing qualifiers and stuff, right? So, yeah. um, you know, I imagine that you'll find your way down there at some time, and then. Uh, 
yeah everybody can kind of sure. hop in a van and play those tournaments and stuff together but uh it's it's always cool to like find the travel and stuff but i guess you played a little bit of east coast pro tour right yeah that's um most of the tournaments were were quebec i'm only 10 minutes from quebec so yeah yeah the so that furthest, a bit furthest, no 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 the furthest one that way was uh st george's and it was four hours or something maybe three and a half right but I think I was able to stay at home for some of them. They're so close, which I mean, your costs are literally nothing. It's mm-hmm. 50 bucks for gas. Yeah. But even, even the ones in Toronto, like Coogs up there in Caledon near TPC, uh, Zach Mace is downtown, Nick Ross is in Hamilton. Like you kind of got that whole area charted out. Cam Keller, the guy who was on my school team as well. He's out in London. Like you kind of got places everywhere that you can bunk if you need to. Yeah, nice. but once you get once you get doing tour Canada, like even if you're doing Latino or something like that, like your Airbnbs, hotels, you're hoping that guys guys you know want to stay with you. Like mm-hmm. I, I I didn't I've never played it, but I mean obviously you hear about it, and I know a lot of guys who have played it. Like your expenses are way up there. Well, yeah, when I was with uh like I was at Nobleton Lakes on the Monday queue with Ziggy, like I was carrying for him and Trevor was there as well. So we just stopped and had a beer or some lunch or whatever after and that was one of the things they were saying is like it can be a pretty big deterrent for guys too, right? Like you have to they're both very committed athletes to, you know, getting to mm-hmm. that next level and there's probably yeah. so many good golfers that can't just because the financial you know obligations that yeah. come with with trying to get it's, to that level right it's tough to find like for a tour like that and like all those like development tours even corn ferry like you gotta have good sponsors like i don't have a sponsor yet i'm still kind of looking around but it's tough to find like especially one who's okay i want to play the canadian tour it's tough to find someone who's going to cut you a check for 30 grand so you can be comfortable for the year yeah you know? like it's especially when you have, I mean, if you're doing Q school for that and stuff, you almost have no credibility about your school. And some people don't really care about that or know enough about it. Yeah. And it's all like, there's so many players too, right? Like when we were talking with Zach and you and I talking the other day, just about uh, like how many players even at the corn Ferry tours, like qualifiers. Right. So like you're going in with hundreds and hundreds of players and it's kind of you know i think there is in total 21 spots or something by the end of the year that are left right or 26 maybe but maybe maybe that's yeah yeah that might i think there were 26 pga tour cards this year and there might have been less corn for a tour cards which is uh tough man that's tough when you're going with that guys to (laughs) kind of break that down right yeah so those guys are so good it's crazy yeah and the players are just awesome but uh go ahead bryce Let's yeah, I want to get into the what's in the bag. I think it's time. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's what do we got? What are we working with here? I mean, are you a big gear guy, or is, um, you know what you're playing? Or I mean, obviously like heads and no, stuff. yeah, yeah. Do you no, get into like the shafts and stuff too, or no? Yeah, yeah. I know what I, I've had. Well, I've had the same bag for a long time. I just got new irons in January, actually. That's the newest thing. But um, let's save the best for last. Though. Let's save that piece for yeah, last. I, I believe. You. Yeah. I assume it's like a two iron or a five wood or something. I guarantee oh. that's what it is. Oh, maybe. Yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Chief, I've had the same shaft for a while. I got a GP7X, the Tour AD ones. The orange okay. one? No, it's the light blue one. The, oh, okay, yeah. It's good. I think I actually looked it up the other day because I forgot. I think it's like 86X. It's perfect. Like you can right. just laugh at it. Yeah, it's um, heavy. I cracked my sim in February, um, so they sent me a sim too. I yeah. really want to. Get, I want to get rid of that. That that thing spins a lot. I had the stealth for stage two golf town around here lent me one. Yeah, oh, that, thing, that thing is so good. I, I'm gonna. Yeah, we both have it. It's so good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna buy it probably within the next couple of weeks. You kind of have to, but uh, three wood. This is where I'm not sure. My head pro just gave it to It's either a TSI 2 or 3, the head. Okay. I've got an old vintage Pro Force V2 in there. Well, I got that in my hybrid. That's so good. I like <laughs> mine too. X96 with 1.6 torque. It, it's okay. great. Dude, you're using some heavy shafts. That's just, I got a quick backswing. That's why that helps. Okay. I've tried the light driver shafts and like, I just get the control. I, oh, I get the quacks with them. They're going right every time. Mm-hmm. but 
no, I guess I got to skip over that one. So it's the a five wood Bryce, you nailed it. It's a five wood, you nailed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that. Not many <laughs> people have unicorn like wedges or like no, uh, you know, no wedges are just vocal. My wedge is actually five years old. I gotta get some. Oh wow! Uh, those, what do the they, wear marks look on those things? They're yeah, they're getting their SM sevens. I think I got the same. I got KBS X one thirties in the irons and wedges. But uh, the irons I just got. I've had Mizuno for a long time, but I just got the the JPX. I think the nine twenty one tours they're called. Nice, yeah, they're good. I, yeah, I nice. only when I was getting fit for those, it was only the seven iron, and like I was only hitting seven irons for every set. And those Mizuno's, like I wanted, I kind of wanted to stick with them to begin with, but I was hitting them the best. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get it. The set comes in, open it up. I pulled out the four and five iron first. I'm like. Like these are game improvement. Like they're they're this thick. Like they're <laughs> the the seven iron is pretty much a blade. Like it's a muscle back, whatever. And the four and five are like thick game improvement irons. I'm like, oh my, God. like what what did I just order? <laughs> Take them out of the range, never going back. Like it's yeah, they're good, eh? I, yeah, I don't care. I don't care what people say when they like they're not that thick. They're not a blade. They're not a muscle back, but they're just reinforced a little bit. But they help so much. I mean, you can hit that foreign off the tee, like 240, 235 with that mm -hmm. thing. But sometimes you get, like, there's a big difference between the five and six iron, like, where it goes from muscle to that that thick back. Like, you get some jump jumpy five irons that go 215, and I can barely get a six iron 195. So, Yeah, I've got, like, the... Yeah the tricks on like the ZU, like the utility six five is like my yeah yeah and that, those that are gonna up actually they're nice that thing's like that that's like my little unicorn that thing's got to be like eight years old man but like it's i don't know i was playing the u 500 for like five rounds and then that thing went back in the bag it was like it's too hard to get rid of it i love it i got the gaffer but it's not in the bag right now no it's uh not the same bryce also hits a four iron <laughs> I remember I like I, I like tried to walk him off the tee because we're playing at Port Hope. It's like into the sorry we'll get back to the bag, but like <laughs> yeah, I'm, I apologize for that this moment, but I was kind of a dick about it. But I was just not no, it was actually tea. like it was actually pretty <laughs> funny because like uh, the bunkers like I don't know two twenty two thirty carry money game by the way too money so. game. Yeah. There's a and there's a bit of wind, so like I see him with an iron. I don't know what he has in his hand. Don't don't get me wrong. I know how how far Bryce hits right, so. I, I like he's kind of like setting up or whatever and I was like uh Bryce you're like um like I know he had a long iron so I was like that bunker that kind of carries like the whole left side or two-thirds of the left side is uh like that's like right near kind of carry zone or whatever and, and there's and he jumped in right as I was about to take the club yeah because I I was like <laughs> I, I would I know the course like perfectly right so I, I don't want him to be in a position where he's like what the hell I just kind of hit in the bunker or whatever so yeah. the uh his landing pad it's like eight yards wide on the right hand side so um he was just like yeah whatever macker or something like that and uh yeah I think you actually carried like the right hand side of the bunker found that eight yard uh landing pad and uh probably hit it like I don't know 245 or something yeah like that, I backed so. off and he continued talking. I stepped up. He continued <laughs> talking, and I swung as you were saying something. I don't know what you're saying. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm always gonna talk during a swing. It was I a bit of a cocky right. asshole. Yeah. Excuse my French move, but I was not happy. You backed me off in the first place. But he, Bryce had also in the first four holes had made like 90 feet worth of putts, and I've never yeah. seen him make 90 feet worth of putts in 18 holes. So yes, I was uh, trying to get any mental advantage that I could. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, back into it. So I think we're we haven't got to the putter. Right, yeah. No, yeah, putter. I just uh, and then I, don't even, I don't even know what year it is. It's uh, Zach Mason's. Oh, you have the spider. Back, yeah, you said that earlier. Spider. It's like one of the red original one maybe from like four oh like five the years. original spider tour yeah i think so yeah i think so well those are pretty yeah. popular like i know is it the I one that I, does it have like all the paint chipping on it it does have a bunch of paint chipping on it yeah yeah, yeah. i can't remember what year i can't remember what year but like those like people love them though like it's love it. yeah there's no line on top either you just it's yeah just like I was gonna ask you that. It's got a yeah. lot of issues with uh, like the paint. I don't remember what it was, but I remember people being like, "It sucks because the paint's like chipping." But like, they love the putter. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, I, I used the. DJ DJ still rolls it, or, I think. 
Mm, no, I think he <laughs> rolled, he rolls the GT now, like the newest yeah. one. But he did use that black one. For yeah, ever. yeah, he had it all blacked out. But it was a, uh, yeah, it's a pretty popular putter though. But um, what was the ping that you were rolling before? It was just I might have it. Oh, it's probably in my car actually. It's uh just a, just a ping answer like a my dad's old putter. It is vintage, just like the br- the bronze head on it. I just had about forty five thousand pieces of lead tape on it, just so I could feel oh. dead. <laughs> but I, I love that like i love that thing i used it for so long and then you just get some absolute demons and those things did not go away with the ping so the spider was back in the bag <laughs> yeah i have uh like an old ping pal i, I just or ping zing i grabbed it in my hand here i used to roll no. it like a little bit okay. just with for just for on it, or? i used to uh like i always rolled the number nine odyssey number nine so i've mentioned that a bunch of times on the pod and i jr uh actually mentioned to me because i always say oh if you're watching over on youtube so this is your opportunity if you're watching or listening in the car or on spotify or apple uh go over and watch on youtube because we're supposed to tell people that um but look at this grip this thing is like yeah the original so ping nice. man like it's so old and yeah yeah this is oh hang on my microphone might but i just love like the bottom just being like straight flat i love that mm-hmm. like, it's so clean and this thing is old man it's like so old but it's uh, I don't know. It's a gamer if you ever get in a pinch. If uh, I know I'll never go back to it, but it's uh, it's cool to kind of keep them in and think about. That's right. Yeah, that's where I'm at now with that thing. It's nice to have, but I'm never going back to it. Yeah, yeah. Too much uh, too much out there. Like I know I've gone to like heel hosel putters ever since that when I was a kid, and then like, uh, I just yeah, it's hard, man. That like that visual line is is good for me. That like Delmar look is kind of always going to be something that I roll. So. Did pick up I'm the tool on Atlanta, and that thing was sweet, like so nice. So oh, yeah, nice. those two ones are they're sweet, they're really they're good. Nice. Except, uh, just, just, Bryce, was it with you? You and I, Bryce, were playing a. Was it you and I were playing a? Or no, it's my friend Kirk, so he doesn't support as well. So, um, he actually has my backup gamer now, my other Delmar. So, um, Bryce, I let that thing go. I don't know if you ever thought I would. I know, yeah, you told me. Yeah, so I did let it go. Um, but I used that tool on, and I, like, putted on the first hole. I had, like, a 15-foot putt, and I left it eight feet short or something with that. No <laughs> warm-up putts or anything. I hadn't rolled a single putt with that thing ever, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm uh, going to have to work on that in the offseason. Yeah. Oh, this I, is need like... the, I need the mallet. I'm too shaky in the backswing. I need the technology. <laughs> what is the unicorn? We're here. Is uh. Oh, I don't know the exact year. I think it's 2008. It's uh, it's one of the the nice Nike Sasquatches. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't cover. know it was gonna you be like keep, that, but I knew it was something really old. Like just gotta keep, you gotta keep the head exposed. I don't does it, on it? Does it have? Is it got that really loud tink when you hit the ball? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's high pitch. Yeah. But this summer, actually, I mean, it had the. It was just a stiff. Don't even know what kind of shaft it was. It just yeah. was. Really that said Sasquatch and stiff and I had That's that shaft on it forever this summer the head the head flew off just mid swing like snap flew off my I picked up another pro force like the closest thing I could find to, to steel because they don't even make those shafts anymore mm-hmm. obviously <laughs> but um, just one of those like st- very stiff v2s threw it in there my dad threw it in here in the basement had some epoxy laying around and like second shot on the range the next day the, head, the head's halfway down the range again <laughs> like, yeah we need like that epoxy is 14 years old we gotta get something but he got it on there it works now it's not quite the same like it, it's a lot lighter but it I mean, it's still it's a fairway finder it doesn't go very far i mean catch it as best as possible it's probably carrying 240 245 it's not the square head one is it no, no, I did oh, have that okay. though as a junior. I had that for a bit. That that's the loud. that's the one with the big loud ting on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, man, that one is loud. Everybody knew when the Sasquatch was coming out. Or was that the that's sumo? It. That might have been called the sumo, right? The sumo. Oh, I had the Cobra L five V. That was the loudest thing. Like you're just you're teeing up a barrel. It was crazy. Man, that's uh that's good, Bryce. I'm thinking about it. You think I get this back in the bag here? Holy old R seven. Holy look that at is that nice. thing. 
That is like if Custom Clubs, if Chris is watching this, he will uh, he will tell me to get that thing back in the bag. It's just a paperweight yeah. on the desk right now. So. I have an R. I I got an R nine over there. I think. Yeah, R nine was a sweet R nine. Yeah. Coming back, man. All these guys playing half sets and stuff. I've done a little bit, and you know, finding clubs like this so you can just hit the fairway when you need to. And yeah, I don't have a exactly. five wood right now. I don't have a five wood. Maybe I got to get that back in. But I'll never take out the three iron. And I don't know. I just I can't make it work. But uh, I don't know. My stealth hybrid is the best thing I've ever bought. I've never hit a hybrid in my life. Bought a stealth hybrid with a um, B four uh, Pro Force, and yeah. it's my that thing is that thing, thing is pretty sweet. It is pretty good. I just can't um, control it. I friggin' <laughs> like I'll try to hit it two forty. I'll go two sixty. Like I just can't. Well, we had so like hard. they're so hot. Off rocket the launcher, yeah. man. We had yeah. one. Uh, I can't remember what hole it was, Bryce, but you had like I think it was two forty or something like that, and you flew it like forty yards past. It was like I can't I can't remember <laughs> what hole it was, but it was a little downwind maybe. But it was just like I'm thinking to myself like what hole was that? You know the one I'm talking about though, and it just like yeah. it was just gone, right? Like it was just absolutely gone, but. Probably should have done this earlier, but we're in conversation with Ty Saloni, pro golfer in Canada here. Two times Frickson, Cleveland Golf, All American Scholar, 2019 20, 2021, first t- uh, team, All Max. So, what division is that, Ty? Uh, one. Um, and it's, uh, it's um, not the Mid Atlantic, sorry. Mid American. Mid American. Okay, thank you. So, Mid American yeah. honoree in 2018, 2019, 2020, 21. 22 hopefully i got that right uh twice named mid-american conference golfer of the week february 2nd and april 1st um doesn't give me a year there but uh, i assume that's pretty recent so um i think that was, I think that was this year was it last year yeah nice okay yeah. Yeah. so um just before we kind of wrap things up ty can we grab a couple socials and stuff if anybody i know uh, you're kind of taking november off and then you'll probably be plugging it back in the new year if anybody wants to follow your career um can you grab any socials we can send some people over there and check it out yeah i, th- I think they're just i think it's just my name <laughs> i don't think there's anything special um as usual yeah, don't we pop this question on people all the time as usual if you're uh listening to the car or whatever it is when you stop i'm gonna link it down below so you can just go over and check it out um I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, you want me to email it to you i'll email it to you after. it is just ty saloni so t-y-c-e-l-o-n-e yeah um that's on instagram anyway so that's uh, probably the one yep. that'll pop in there and uh you got to go check it out because i'm sure there's i haven't looked but there's got to be uh we need a what's in the bag photo maybe tie and like leave that thing exposed <laughs> or the back of the car yeah. when you're walking with that thing so you said there was no head cover going on that right no absolutely not so you no. just like i don't know if that's a pure intimidation factor like if you walk up to the you know first tee with that with that thing exposed or if that's like if somebody thinks that uh i don't know but it's it's sort of like this reminds me of that moment bryce when we were saying with callum davison i don't know if you played with him and and uh, he's a cross-handed player so he was like the pga tour Canada player of the year and when he was down at the palms we were saying like you could just walk up to the range playing cross-handed like rip a few off the hosel and then like Bryce had one of our best uh, clips say, hey, buddy, I'll play you a cross-handed today or whatever, right? So <laughs> and go uh, in 40 bucks. Yeah, you could just walk out with that thing and just be like, you know, this is my set. Like, you're, yeah, and just uh, shoot a 63 or something like that, make a few bucks. But um, I don't know. Cats get out of the bag now. Sorry, Ty, we uh, we ruined it for you. But uh, I like yeah, it. I like hearing those old <laughs> clubs, man. That's really cool. I, uh, I hope that thing stays in for a while. It will until the head flies off again. <laughs> or until hey, if uh, if you're a brand listening to the pod and you want to send tie some clubs, then maybe we'll get rid of that five wood at that time. But uh, that's what we're here for, and uh, yeah, hopefully if uh, if any of those big brands are here listening, Ty is uh, available. He's looking for a sponsor, so give him a chat and uh, get that Nike out of there. Or maybe Nike will start making some new clubs again. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. I I love that squatch. You can't. I don't know if I can replace that one. Send them some demos. Send them some demos, and we'll see. We'll see. See what we can do. Yeah. But uh, no, this was great, Ty. Um, really appreciate you taking the time. And, uh, you know, I know you're taking a little bit of time off. So maybe we'll uh, catch up with you again, kind of uh, mid season or something like that when you figure out what's going on in 2023. Man, best of luck to you. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, boys. Yeah. And if you're out this way, Thanks, let's, uh, let's tee it up, come through Port Hope. And Bryce will yeah. bring Bryce will bring his brother and uh, Blaker's a stick. And, and maybe we'll get a match. Uh, maybe we'll get a match going, Ty and I. A couple get, yeah. We'll get a game going. I can get a. I'll get another lefty from school. I like it. I like it, Bryce. You'll you'll yeah. get stuck with. Uh, maybe you'll get stuck with me, but we'll need some strokes. I don't know. We'll have to. Uh, we'll have to work out something. But. Mm-hmm. 
I like it. All right. Um, let's go watch the rest of the Leaf game. I'm sure they're probably in the third period here. So Yeah, they're down um, 0-2 right now. It's not looking good. All right. And, oh, I did see that. It was plus 425 right now. Um, <laughs> bet 365. So that's – I had to, like – I. I, I threw a few bucks down on it, so just had to. Like when you see yeah. when you see it that when you see it that high, you gotta you gotta take a little something on that, right? So you have to. Sorry, Leaf fans, but I will go over to Instagram right now and I'll post a screenshot because nobody's gonna believe me when this comes out on Thursday or Friday. So, um, but yeah, man, all the best. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll definitely have to have you back. If any of the boys that you went to school with, uh, this is pretty much an Eastern Michigan <laughs> University pod now. So if any of the boys <laughs> want to come on, send them our way. Tell them to uh, come on and have a chat with us and. Uh, yeah, we'll kind of uh, we'll tell their story as well. Thank you so much, Ty. This was great, man. Hey, thank you, guys. That was fun. He's out in my ball and of course I tee up. I lose the ball and I re up. I miss the fairway. I probably end up in the ocean or maybe the beach. And I'm on a par five and I'm finna go reach it. Second was blind, I see it. Feel like it might be an average. I was working scenario.